Okay? Your very first mark, at least when I mark, I give you for knowing that from first principles is this formula. The limit when h tends to 0 of fx plus fx plus h minus fx divided by h. Okay, that's what your first, first mark goes to. Now, guys, what does it mean if I put in here an x plus h? What does that mean? What instruction am I giving the person who's doing it? In everywhere where there's an x, I must put x plus h. In other words, here we go. The limit when h tends to 0. Now, everywhere where there's an x, guys, I just want to commend you. You guys did excellent. You, you never forgot that limit part. I was very impressed. Okay? Wherever I see, so in this formula, in that formula, in that function formula, wherever I see an x, I replace an x plus h. So where's the x? Denominator. So I'm going to replace x with the x plus h. Minus. And then on this side, I just have fx. So I'm just subtracting 1 over x, and everything is divided by h. Yo. Oh, is there, is, there's the question of a negative. I'm sorry, thank you. There's a negative in front there, which means there's a negative in front there, which means the negative and negative makes it a positive. So there's a positive there. Thanks, Linda. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm adding two fractions. Yay, grade yeah. four. How do we add two fractions? Common? Common denominator. This denominator contains an x plus h. This denominator has an x. So which means my common denominator has to include both of those. An x and an x plus h. Now what do I need on, um, for this term? I need a x. x. So I'm multiplying x in the denominator and an x in the numerator. Which means I've got a negative x there. For this one, I need an x plus h. I need an x plus h, which means I multiply that in the top and in the bottom, an x plus h. So here at the top I have a plus x plus h in brackets, and 1 times that. And in my denominator, I still just have my h. And the reason why I couldn't have replaced the h with a 0 yet is because I'll get an undefined answer. As long as I get undefined, I'm not allowed to substitute yet. So the whole aim is to get rid of that denominator, that h in the denominator. So let's just simplify the numerator, which is still a fraction. So I'm still left with the limit of h tending to 0. Now in the numerator, looks, look what happens. I've got a minus x and a plus x. Lovely. So they cancel and I'm left in the numerator's numerator with an h. Okay. In the denominator, I'm left with x times x. So x squared plus xh. And in the denominator, I still have h. The denominator, I've got a fraction over, do I have a fraction in the denominator? Yeah. H, over one. h over 1. Yes, I do have a fraction, but it's h over 1. Not 1 over h. It's h over 1. Okay. So, how do I deal with a fraction over a fraction? Different times. So, the limit as h tends to 0. Now I tip in times. I've got h over x squared plus xh 
multiply by, instead of h over 1, I multiply with 1 over h. And that is where I see the magic happens. Hey. They cancel and I'm left with the limit of h tending to 0 of, now there's just a 1 there and a 1 there, so a 1 over x squared plus xh. And now I can substitute. Yes, h is still in the denominator, but it doesn't make the whole denominator 0 when I substitute. Okay? When I substitute, only this term becomes 0, I still have an x squared. So I'm allowed to substitute. I substitute in the 0 and I get, that's all that's left over. If the 0 gets substituted in here, it will be 0 times x, which will make this whole thing 0, and I'll be left with 1 over x squared. Is it okay? Wow. Thank <laughs> you.